You can't spell Bethesda without EA. This is a saying that's been passed around for quite a while now, but it's true. Bethesda does have the letters EA in it, and they're kind of acting like EA now, so... That's a funny meme. There's another popular saying that kind of applies here. What was it? You either die a hero or live long enough to become horse duty. That's also applicable here. Do I think Bethesda is as bad as EA? No. Don't be ridiculous, they aren't there yet, but do I think they're slowly turning into them? Absolutely. The past year or two have shown us a rapid change in focus at Bethesda. Instead of making great games to make money, it's now make a half-baked game that we can sorta of fix later and cram microtransactions down their throats and milk as much money as we can squeeze. Ah, Bethesda. You know, people used to be able to sit back and say, yeah, most gaming companies may suck rear-end cheeks, but at least Bethesda still makes high-quality, Gucci-quality games. Well... Didn't you hear? It's 2019! All companies gotta be on that money grind, begging for your wallet every two seconds. It's all about games as a service now. Somehow, in between Skyrim and Fallout 76, we went from this... Aw, oh, snap! $20 for a new six and a half hour long main quest with side quests and a brand new island to explore? Gee, thanks Bethesda. To this dumb shit. Hold up there, boy cow country roads youngin. I know you're busy walking around shooting stuff in our broken ass game, but can I get you to pay $30 for this Santa suit? But wait, since I like you, I'll mark that down to $20 because I'm generous like that. What's that? You smell horse shit. God, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It was never $30, it's always been $20. Hold up, let me get my Sharpie out. There. And now cough up, ho. Oh, and we can't forget about this. Hey, Bethesda, I paid $200 for the Power Armor Edition. It was supposed to come with a canvas bag. I got a glorified hacky sack. What am I supposed to do with this thing? Drown? Ah, oh, snap. Hour B. Here's 500 atoms for our microtransaction shop. Go buck wild, don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> You get the point. Bethesda has fallen from its golden throne of gaming sexiness down to using the tactics of EA and Activision. Instead of releasing a quality game, let's release a half-baked asset flip of our last game, charge upwards to $200 for it, and shove microtransactions in there. Screw our fans. I'm not here to rip Fallout 76 a new booty. Not yet. It's a dead horse that's been annihilated to the point where you almost gotta feel bad for it. Anyways, I'm here to talk about when and how Bethesda started to suck ass. What led to it, and will it affect their upcoming games Starfield and Elder Scrolls VI? To do that, we gotta go back to the beginning and really analyze their history in chronological order. To find out exactly when they turned into money whores. When you think of Bethesda, you probably think of Todd Howard's godly smile. After that, you probably think of Elder Scrolls. It's really their flagship series. Now, I'm not exactly one of those people who say, the older games are better, but uh... They were! <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. But you can see a clear shift in design philosophy in Bethesda's games if you go back a while. We're not going to be talking about Arena or Daggerfall because nothing really noteworthy happened in those games. Morrowind, I didn't play it much, but that game was an in-depth and engaging RPG. It didn't hold your hand, you had to find your way around the world, no quest markers telling you where to go, and you had to walk everywhere, no fast travel. The combat sucked ass twizzlers. Morrowind had no predatory microtransactions, because those weren't around back then. Better times, honestly. Oblivion, one of my favorite games of all time. It was less complicated than Morrowind, and it lost a lot of the more in-depth elements and features. It got rid of a ton of skills and gave you fast travel and map markers. But it was still a good RPG, making use of a class system, and had the best quests in the series, if you ask me. Seriously, compare the Dark Brotherhood from Oblivion to Skyrim's. There's no contest! Okay, some of that was nostalgia talking, but wait- They introduced a DLC for horse armor. It was $2.50. People hated that. Nowadays, people would say, that's not a big deal. Shows you how much gaming has changed. We've become desensitized to this horse shit. Oh boy, the big one. Skyrim. I'm 
gonna get a ton of shit for this one. Now, there are two camps people usually fall into with this game. You either love it, OMG, best game ever made, I think the horses are sexy, or you think it's lame, baby duty, watered down, dumbed down, not an RPG poop sauce. That's me, the second one. Now, don't get me wrong, Skyrim is a great game. But in my opinion, it's the most dull and least engaging game in the series. I mean, every quest sends you to a cave to fight Draugr. Last Thieves Guild quest? Draugr Ruin. Pretty much every College of Winterhold quest? Draugr Ruin. Kill me. Yet again, they stripped out more skills, made it so you couldn't really fail any quest, and made the leveling system far simpler. So between those three games, what was a reoccurring theme between all of them? After Morrowind, each game started stripping features, simplifying gameplay, and making the games more accessible to a larger audience. Is this always a bad thing? No. But it does show the change in direction Bethesda has taken, broadening their audience and casualizing the games. Because more people buying your game means more money. Obviously. It's a bit of a no-brainer there. Now, I'm not a hardcore gamer girl. I'm not saying that making Skyrim more approachable to a larger amount of people is bad. At all. I'm saying it came at a cost of the more in-depth elements the game had in the past that made people fall in love with the series to begin with. All in all, the Elder Scrolls series hasn't been ruined or anything, yet. It's still great. I still play Skyrim myself. Why wouldn't I? I have it on my fucking watch! You might be saying, okay Wombat, what's your point? Where's the scummy stuff Bethesda's done with the Elder Scrolls? Well, in Skyrim, they pulled an extra dirty move. They tried to monetize mods. They made it so you had to purchase mods on Steam, something that has always been free. Mods fix Bethesda's broken, glitchy games, so the fact that they tried to make a quick buck off of that is extra slimy. Obviously, players fought back and Bethesda changed their minds, but they wouldn't hold back for long. Bethesda got the rights to Fallout from Interplay Studios, and they made Fallout 3, a first-person shooter RPG right around the time they released Oblivion. And although it strayed from the roots of the first two Fallout games, it managed to make its own identity out of the franchise while still keeping the themes and feeling of the old games alive. So, what kind of scummy shit did they pull here? Nothing. Fallout 3 was a great game with fairly priced, awesome DLC. No horse armor here. The problem here actually comes in when Bethesda decided to let another studio play with their toys in the sandbox and make their own game. Bethesda allowed Obsidian to make their own Fallout game using their Gamebryo engine. Obsidian was given 18 months, a year and a half, to create an all-new Fallout game, something that Bethesda usually gives themselves six years to do. And in a lot of people's opinions, including mine, Obsidian wiped the floor with Bethesda, tore them a new assholio in terms of how engaging and in-depth a Fallout game could be. Far more meaningful choices and more RPG elements, such as your skills affecting dialogue, faction reputations, and multiple ways to finish quests. Look up the quest Beyond the Beef and just how many ways there are to finish that quest, and then compare that to most Bethesda-designed quests, and you'll know exactly what I mean. It really upstaged Bethesda, honestly, with what was accomplished in a fraction of their normal development time. And guess what? Bethesda were complete turd munches to Obsidian afterwards. You see, not only did they give them no time at all to make the game, they also didn't pay Obsidian a promised bonus upon completing the game because it was one point below the Metacritic score it was supposed to get. I'm not joking. And the lower review scores were mainly due to how buggy the game was at launch, thanks to Bethesda's dinosaur fossil of an engine, and those bugs were promptly fixed with a patch. But the fact still remains that Obsidian made a better game, in my opinion, with Fallout New Vegas in a year and a half than Bethesda did in six years with Fallout 4. Oh yeah, Fallout 4. Whether or not you like Fallout 4, it is the clearest example of Bethesda simplifying their games. They went from a good RPG with shooter elements with Fallout 3 to an action shooter with light RPG mechanics in Fallout 4. I know, many people may jump up my ass and say, Fallout 4 is an RPG. Okay, then so is Far Cry. 
In Far Cry, you do just about as much shooty shooty bang bang no questions asked as you do in Fallout 4, and it has leveling up your gun damage, just like Fallout 4. About all that Fallout 4 has to make itself really different is it has a terrible conversation system and factions. That's it! It's Far Cry with a Fallout skin. Eat me. I actually enjoy Far Cry with a Fallout skin, don't get me wrong. There are just far less meaningful choices to make, and every quest is a go here, shoot this, and return affair. And you don't feel like anything you do changes anything. Obviously, if you enjoy Fallout 4, that's great. So do I. I'm not saying it's a bad game. In truth, it's a very good game, and a fun game on its own. But it is a terrible, no good, very bad, shitty ass Fallout game. Yet again, it shows their change in design and how they continue to simplify their games, which is an issue to a lot of fans, including me. But no, no. That's not the worst thing. They did it again. They brought back paid mods. This time on console and PC. A collection of new game content for Skyrim and Fallout 4, including new weapons, new armor, new outfits and accessories, new crafting and housing features. Bend me over and shove a pitchfork straight up my ass! This time, they chose to keep free mods and their paid mods separate, which is why people didn't start a riot over it. However, the mods they do have in the Creation Club are Liquid AIDS. You can drink them. Five dollars for a power armor skin, when there's a free version someone made in a mod, and it's better. Four dollars for Chinese stealth armor, which, by the way, the free mod is better. And it- Is that two dollars and fifty cents for horse power armor? What? Do you think you're funny, Bethesda? Do you think we're all gonna laugh at your self-parody? Aha, remember when you all got mad when we charged two fifty for horse armor? We're doing that again, but this time it's horse power armor. Aren't we funny? And no, you can't just pay $2.50 for that because EA Thesda were sneaky with it and made it so the cheapest package of Creation Club credits is $8 for 750 credits. So you have to pay at least $8 for that horsepower armor. Eat the ass of a dead lion, Bethesda. Just gobble it up. And now, we finally arrive at Fallout 76. Do I really have to explain just how terrible Fallout 76 is? I mean, that could be an entire video by itself, and everyone's already said what needs to be said. We got false advertising. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. My water does not look particularly water-like. This is not rendering at all for me. This looks like dookie butter. We got glitches that have glitches on top of their glitches. We got an overpriced power armor edition for $200 for frick's sake that doesn't even come with the advertised items. We got Todd Howard still a fucking cutie. Fallout 69 was an absolute pile of puke. And again, if you like it, that is great. I am happy for you. I have no doubt that you can have fun with it. But you can also have fun playing with rabbit shit. But at the end of the day, it's still shit. Ignoring everything I just covered, the game is boring. You know how in Fallout 4 every quest was pretty much go here, shoot this, return with little else involved? At least that game had dialogue, factions, NPCs, multiple endings kinda, and some choices kinda. Well, take all of that out except the shooty looty and you got Fallout 76. It's boring. They rushed the game, they didn't care, and even Todd Howard admitted they knew people would hate it, they'd just fix it later. This isn't a game, even from the beginning, this is not gonna be like, you know, high Metacritic game, that's not what this is. No matter what we do, we're gonna have some problems, and we need to make sure we're ready to continue that momentum from before release, you know, right through it. Now, as if releasing a rushed game, charging upwards to $200 for it, baiting pre-orders for beta access two weeks before launch when nothing could be fixed, and not caring how bad the game was, as if that wasn't bad enough of Bethesda, the Atomic Shop is just the cherry on top of the shit salad. Keep in mind, even though some of these prices seem like they'd be less than $20, Bethesda strategically made it so you have to purchase atoms at specific prices. So even if something is 1,200 atoms and should be $12, it's fucking 20, deal with it. Emotes, $20. Fat ass Santa cosplay, $20. Red rocket fucking sign. 
$20. It's absolutely ridiculous how a company went from spending years upon years to craft huge, expansive, and deep games, yes, Fallout 4 and Skyrim still count because at least they gave a shit, to now producing this rushed, cobbled together asset flip garbage, and then had the cojones to say, can we have an extra $20 for a sign? That's why I am no longer excited for Elder Scrolls 6, and I couldn't give a donkey's dick about Starfield. That game can deep throw a star for all I care. If you earn my money, I'll hand it over. But the second you charge me upwards to $200, then throw yourself at me like a beggar asking for spare change, just one more 20 for some clothing, you can eat a skunk. So, should you worry about Elder Scrolls 6? Yes, you kind of should. Expect a dumbed-down, simplified Skyrim, and expect microtransactions, or the return of the shit club with paid mods. Their past behavior shows that's what's going to happen. And if Elder Scrolls Blades is anything to go off of, maybe loot boxes. You know, because that's how Elder Scrolls should be. But hey, $8 and you get a useless mud crab to follow you around. Neat. This new outro you're about to see is made by CryomouthXG. Check out his music, he makes really badass stuff just like this. Wow, 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 wow.